What's up guys, Justin here with the realtimeessentials.com back with another Unity beginner tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're gonna talk through how to get started in Unity in 2021. So we're gonna talk about how to download the program, everything you need to know in order to get started with the program. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so note that I will put timestamps at the bottom of this video. So if you are beyond the download point and you wanna just jump to the Unity point, just use the timestamps at the bottom of the page. All right, so first off, let's talk through how to download Unity. So what you wanna do is you wanna to go to unity.com and there's gonna be a button at the top of the page that says get started. Even if they change this front page, it'll say something like that. All right, so what that's gonna do is that's gonna take you to the Unity store where you can download Unity. First thing you're gonna notice is there's some options on here with some kind of like big scary dollar values on here. Um, if you're just getting started with Unity, you don't really need to worry about this for right now um, because you can jump over into the individual option and there are options for both student and personal use where you can use Unity for or free so um, obviously if you there are some requirements here like for example if you're a student you can sign up over here um, or if you're just going to use this for personal use you can download the free version here notice that the requirement there is that you um, need to do less than a hundred thousand dollars in revenue or funding in the last 12 months so if you've already gotten started and you are near that point you probably know enough to know which one you need but for everyone that just wants the personal version you can just click on the button for get started and what that's going to do is that's going to give you the option to download Unity. And so the first thing you want to do is you want to download the Unity Hub. The Unity Hub is going to be the page that you can use in order to create and manage products inside of Unity. So that's what we want to do first is we want to click on the button for download the Unity Hub, install that file when it's downloaded, and then we'll take a look at what that hub looks like. All right, so once you have the Unity Hub installed, you're going to have options over here for different projects that you've created. Um, there's learning opportunities. So there's actually some really excellent tutorials on Unity's website that you could follow through on. It'll actually show you how to create different games and other things like that. So you can definitely go on there and do that. I recommend that you do actually. There's links to the community. So that'll take you to like the Unity blog or the answer page or the forum um, or um, the option down below, which is Unity installs. And so you wanna make sure that you have an install of Unity on your computer. So this is gonna be the version of Unity that you have installed. Notice that I just have the one installed right now, um, but you can click on the button to add if you don't have one. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna let you select the version of Unity that you wanna download. And so there's a number of different options in here. So recommended releases or other things like that. Usually you wanna go with the recommended release at least for right now. So there are some official releases that don't have long-term support yet. So a lot of the time you're just gonna to wanna to go with the recommended release. You just click the next button and what it's gonna do is it's gonna allow you to add different modules. So those modules are gonna be different pieces of code that let you work with different um, things. So if you're gonna be building stuff for Android or iOS or other things like that, make sure that you check the box in here for that. There's also different language packs and documentation, um, but you can select all of those right here. And then you can click on the button for done in order to download that. And so it's gonna ask if you wanna allow it to make changes to your device. I'm gonna say yes. And it's gonna go through and it's gonna download that version of Unity and install it. And I'm actually gonna stop this because my internet's really slow and um, it would take forever to download this. Um, so once you have an install of Unity, you're ready to add a project. And so the project is something that you're gonna create within Unity that's gonna contain um, everything else, right? So there's a lot of different options in here. I'm just gonna click on the button for new to add a new project. So when you do this, what this is gonna give you is it's gonna give you a number of different templates that are contained inside of Unity. So these first four are kind of the standard ones. So there's the 2D, the 3D, the high definition render pipeline, and the universal render pipeline. So those are gonna be kind of your template files that you can use for a new project. And um, there are some differences between the high definition render pipeline and the universal, which we're not gonna talk about too much right now, but if you do want more information, you can click on these buttons right here, and it's gonna tell you exactly 
what is contained inside of each one of these. So in addition, there's also a number of templates in here that you can download um, that are gonna come with more things contained inside of them. So these are kind of like pre-built. So you can use them to kind of learn with Unity or you can use the things that are in them and kind of build on top of them. So there's like a karting micro game and a Lego micro game and other things like that. We're not gonna worry too much about those right now. For now, let's just go with a standard pipeline, typical 3D project. So we're just gonna name this. So we'll just type in beginner project. Notice how you can set the location here as well. Um, this is worth um, paying attention to because these files can take up a lot of space on your hard drive. So for me, right, I have a second hard drive on my computer that I store all of these on. But then you're just gonna click on the button for create. And so when you click on create, what that's gonna do is it's gonna go through and it's gonna create a Unity project right here. So it's gonna load a bunch of different things in, other things like that. It's gonna initialize your project. Um, you don't need to worry too much about what it's doing for right now, it's just setting everything up. Okay, so then once it does this, this is what Unity is going to look like. And so there's a number of different windows and other things like this. We'll kind of talk through these a little bit just so you have kind of an idea. Um, but let's kind of start at the beginning. So first off, you've got your file bar, which is basically the same as every file bar in every program. It's just got options to do most of the things inside of the program. So things like adding 3D objects, for example. There's an option here to do that. There's options in here to import different assets and um, adjust like your camera view. Lots of different things are contained in here, as well as saving your scenes and your projects, um, opening different things, other things like that. So that's where you're gonna go. Um, you can affect like the different windows that are contained around the outside of your project as well. So you can control a lot of different things from that file bar. And then now, as we kind of move down, we've got some different windows in here. So first off, let's take a look at our scene view. So our scene view is gonna be the 3D view that's in the center of our scene. This is where we're gonna be able to move around and adjust things inside of Unity. And I'm just gonna add another object. So we'll just add a cube right now so that we've got an object to kind of fly around. But basically the way this is going to work is you can either use like the gizmo over here in order to move around in the 3D space. You can click and hold your middle mouse button like this in order to um, pan around or you can also hold the right mouse button and then use the W, A, S, and D keys as well as Q and E in order to fly around in your scene. So a lot of the time you're gonna use this, it's gonna be a lot like um, if you were using a video game, which makes sense because this is a game engine. But notice how as soon as I let up on that right, right mouse button, those keys don't work anymore. So um, most of the time you're just gonna hold the right mouse button and um, fly around using those different keys. Okay, so within this scene, there's two tabs in here. There's the scene view and the game view. And so the scene view is gonna be your working view that you're gonna use in order to adjust different things inside of your scene. We'll get more into that in a little bit. But the game view is gonna show your final rendered view of what the output would be inside of your game um, right here. So um, usually your scene view is where you're gonna do that work. Notice how I can't really fly around in game view. It's basically just showing me whatever this camera right here sees. So if I was to adjust this, first off, notice how I get a preview over here. But if I jump into game view, notice how my view inside of the scene has changed based on that. So there's other things you can do in here as well. So for example, there's options for shaded or wireframe. If you just wanna see the geometry that's in here, there's a lot of information that's in here that you don't really need to worry about right now. Um, you can also adjust if the scene lighting is used, um, if the audio is turned on and off, and you can toggle things like fogs and skyboxes, which are in your background, other things like that. Again, don't wanna to get too far into that right now. You can also adjust your camera settings by clicking this little drop down right here. So that's gonna allow you to adjust the field of view of your camera, as well as some things like your acceleration and your speed. There's also an option right here to toggle into and out of isometric mode. So you can toggle into an isometric or a perspective mode as well. 
right here. So there's also an option here for play. And so when you click on play mode, that's actually gonna take you into game mode. And if you have like first person controllers or anything like that, you're gonna be able to actually fly around. We don't have any of that in the scene. So for right now, it's not really doing anything. Just note that that is how you would play your game or test your game if you had something up and running, which we currently don't. So we're just gonna click on this in order to turn that off. But then there's also windows around the outside of our scene. So, so we'll just kind of work our way around the outside for right now. So first off, um, the hierarchy view is going to give you the ability to select different things inside of your scene. So notice how, for example, when I click on these, these are being selected in my scene right here. And so when I do this, I'm getting different options for things that you can adjust in these, as well as the inspector is showing information about our different objects. We'll talk more about that in a second, but this is a great way to keep your scene organized. You can also toggle things on and off by clicking on the eye right here. So this is gonna give you kind of a view of what's in your scene, and you can also kind of adjust these and drag them around a little bit to set up different relationships. Um, down below, um, by default, you're gonna have options for your project right here, which is gonna basically show everything that's contained inside of your project. So notice how your scenes, for example, are currently in a folder. And I just have one scene in here. And if I double click on it, notice how that's just gonna take me back to that sample scene. That sample scene is gonna have different things set up inside of it, depending on what it is. Um, we're not gonna to worry too much about that right now but that's where you're gonna access all of those different things. So once we start adding different models and assets and other things like that into our game, those are all gonna show up down here, as well as things like your materials and lots of different stuff is gonna go in here. This is basically gonna be all the building blocks that make up what goes into your actual 3D view right here. And so basically these just reflect the folders that are inside of your project. So if I was to right click on my assets, for example, and click on show in Explorer, what that's gonna do is that's basically gonna show everything making up that Unity project inside of your Windows Explorer. And so, for example, if I double click inside of my assets, notice how the folder for scenes shows up in here. And let's say that I was to create a new folder and call it something like materials. And then we were to jump back into that folder. Notice how a folder gets created called materials inside of that folder. So basically this is just showing us how the how the folders inside of our project are set up in Unity. So there's also an option here for the console that's going to show you if you have different errors or other things like that as your project tries to run. We won't worry too much about that for right now. Um, but then on the right hand side, there's something called the inspector. And what the inspector does is it shows us information about each one of our objects. And so if we look at the inspector, notice how for each one of these objects, they have different options. So for example, um, if I was to click into this box right here, notice how we have options for the position of our object. Well, you can either adjust those over here by either typing in values or clicking and dragging, or notice how if I adjust this using the gizmo, inside of the scene over here, those values are going to adjust over here on the right hand side as well. And so there's gonna be other information contained in here as well. So things like the material that's applied to our object. So let's say that we were to come into our assets right here and create a material, and we'll get more in depth on this later, but let's say we just wanted to call a, create a material called red. Well, notice how when I create the material called red, it shows up over here when I click on it inside of my, uh, inside of my project. Well, we could just set the albedo value in here to a red color. Well, then when we select our object, notice how this shows us the material that's applied to the object. Well, if I was to take this material and drag it onto this object, notice how that shows up inside of our inspector over here. And so there's a lot of other things that can get adjusted in here as well. So things like the physics settings and other things like that, which we don't wanna to get too far into right now, but notice how you can adjust things being like colliders. So if your player runs into them, instead of running through the cube, um, you are going to like run into that and you're going to stop. So all of that information is controlled with the individual objects over here. Notice how things like casting shadows 
can be turned on and off in order to affect both our performance and also our result that's showing up inside of our scene. And so notice how in addition, there's also options to add different components to this. So you could add like audio or other things that are gonna be associated with these objects. Again, not gonna worry about that too much for right now, but this is going to give you the ability to add things to objects inside of your scene. So that should be, give you enough information to get a project created and get it started. And then in future videos, we'll talk about how to add different assets and how to add different behaviors and other things like that. So make sure you hit that subscribe button down below so that you don't miss any of those videos coming up. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.